Thank you very much. Uh, Norm, thank you so much for the invitation. And Philip, thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, so I got a chance to come to New Zealand. It's been several years, and finally, here I am. Uh, <clears throat> anyone knows about ASEAN? Wow. AHA Center. OK, you, you can pretend you know so I can get more votes. <laughs> OK. All right. I was being asked to discuss about international uh, uh, mechanism. And for us in the country, like New Zealand, anything coming from outside our country will consider international assistance. But out there, uh, when we talk about international assistance, we get the UN system. We get the uh, international uh, NGO system. We got a regional mechanism, which is in between the international and uh, the national. So I will talk more about the regional mechanism, which is the ASEAN mechanism, which is an international system as well for a country. Uh, but before that, I just want to share a story that, you know, for, for some of you, uh, there was a World Humanitarian Summit in Istanbul. So this is a gathering around 9,000, 8,000 people, some world leaders, talking about the future of humanitarian. And when we talk about humanitarian, it usually become two issues, conflict and disaster. This is where the humanitarian response usually take place when we go to any country outside uh, our country. Currently, a lot of discussion about conflict. But at the same time, we understand that a disaster is still a threat. We don't know whether what we have seen today is the biggest one, or it's just a warming up of a bigger, bigger one. So we need to be always ready for that. Now, World Humanitarian Summit, which is very in line about the theme of this conference, is about the future. Here we talk about future of emergency management. In Istanbul, we're talking about the future of humanitarian action. And when we talk about the future, we talk about change. What are the changes that are being discussed at global level when we talk about, let's say, disaster management? It's a very heavy discussion that the world wants to see a shift from an international-led response to a local or national-led response in anywhere when the crisis is happening. It is a very strong intention to give the people who is the victim or the affected by the, the crisis to have a say and decide what they want. There is a discussion as well is more role for regional organization like ASEAN, AHA Center, to bridge between international and the national. But this is talking all about change. You know, interesting about change, easy to talk, difficult to implement, particularly when we are the one that we need to change first. You know, change as good as, you know, excellent, I support, as long as others change. Me, I remain, right? That's the change. It's like coordination. Everyone said coordination is very important in emergency until we are being coordinated. <laughs> uh, coordination, right? When you say, okay, you go to this area, you do this, yeah, but you know, we don't usually that things. We can we would we do this thing. That's very much human behavior. So there is a strong intention to give more role for the national agency when it's a big disaster in that country, more role for people to make a decision. A lot of discussion about the innovation. We are in the smartphone era, which is uh, 20 years ago, is unthinkable. But 15 years ago, we are, I think, including myself, is a, a big fan of uh, Nokia. 
Anyone use Nokia? Uh, okay, the new version, not the old one. <laughs> also the old one. So that's changed. We'll, we'll talk about this more, but let me start with introducing the a regional mechanism, the past, the present, and the future. So I hope after the presentation, then uh, you get a, a strong understanding on this. This is ASEAN. 10 countries, 600 million people. Every year in the a good days, we got about 4.4 billion US dollar losses. Good days. Bad days, one shot is 4.4 billion US dollar. Indian Ocean tsunami, Indonesia alone, the, the damage was about 4.4 billion US dollar. Reconstruction cost 7.2 billion US dollar. Uh, Cyclone Nargis in Myanmar, 4.1 billion US dollar. Aceh, for example, lost around 160,000 people, dead or missing. Myanmar, around 140,000. You get uh, Haiyan, another thousand, another billion of dollar. We got, for example, tile flood. Not so much in uh, casualty. You got flood, usually not about casualty. More on economic, life, uh, economic losses. The flood in Thailand hit industrial zone. World Bank estimated around four billion US dollar economic losses. So disaster in ASEAN is a billion dollar business. And it happened constantly. Indonesia, for example, you know, claim as the uh, supermarket of disaster. Philippines said, no, 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 we are the 7-Eleven, <laughs> right? So me, I'm in the middle. Which one? Is the supermarket, Indonesia, or Philippines is more? I said, OK, can we have the deal? Let us agree. When it comes to disaster in ASEAN, you buy one, you get one free. <laughs> <laughs> it happened every time. And this? is even while we are talking, it happening. So for ASEAN, it is very important to get together and resolve this. About last year, <clears throat> ASEAN became, we call it launch the ASEAN economic community. What does it mean? ASEAN aims to have a more integrated economy and highly cohesive economy. In simple term, everything get connected. The era of, you know, you produce one thing A to Z in one country might not be the case. Now it's starting even. Let's say if we produce a car, a tire might be, tires might be produced here, engine may be in Malaysia, manufacturing may be in Vietnam. It's about supply chain. How does it relate to disaster? It relates to disaster because now disaster is no longer just an issue of one country because it impacts the production of other countries. A disaster in ASEAN is no longer just a humanitarian issue. It becomes an economic issue as well. A disaster in ASEAN, let's say here, is Thailand being affected, and Thailand produce a lot of vegetables, then it will have an impact to other ASEAN countries that import vegetables from Thailand. Price is going up. So the impact is spread up. Now, when we talk about ASEAN economy, now eight of professions in ASEAN can move around for a job. Nurses, architecture, medical doctor, now, if I am I'm an Indonesian, for example, my people were working all over the countries. If something happened here or here, then the country will need to worry. What happened to my citizenship, my, my citizen there? So it becomes everyone's business. So that's why ASEAN will need to go together in handling uh, all of this. 
in 2005, ASEAN signed an agreement, uh, ASEAN agreement on emergency, ASEAN agreement on disaster management and emergency response. Agreement means every single word must be agreed by all the 10 countries. Everyone will say, you know, I, I used to say, you know, the, the commonly discussed word would be whether shall or should, will or would, uh, or whenever possible, should it deem necessary, or all, all this. For us, we are operation, we said, what is this? You know, but this is an agreement. It has an impact to the country that signed to this agreement. There's a lot of discussion. Now, suddenly in the middle of the discussion, negotiation, tsunami took place. It was a tsunami in uh, Indonesia was the biggest one that hit, but other countries being hit as well. Four months. It just it took four months for the ASEAN country to conclude the agreement. Why? Because there is a real case. There is a wake-up call. And I think this, everyone, apply to all of you as well. When is the best time to change policy about disaster management or risk management or emergency management? When it happened. You know, like, uh, like iron, you know, the best time to form is when it is hot. The best time to ask more budget during disaster, restructuring, whatever it is. It's, it's so, I don't know whether it's fortunate or unfortunate, but that's the case. Disaster will always have, specifically the big one, high profile when it's happening. And that is the best time for change. Indonesia, for example, set up a national agency for disaster management by law, we're headed by a minister, reported directly to the president. Aceh, two years, set up a special agency that handle everything, prevention, mitigation, respond, recovery. Because Aceh, at that time, we set up the, what we call only temporary agency. Malaysia, disaster management in Malaysia used to be part of National Security Council. Big flood happened in Malaysia. They decided a standalone agency, only dealing with disaster management, because they got a wake-up call. So it happened everywhere. This is the time where we want to improve, change policy, and also for ASEAN. This agreement provides all aspects of disaster management. It gives a um, function role for the AHA Center. It talks about everything. And the ASEAN leaders, basically, in several ASEAN summit every year, the leader meet twice at least. Uh, anything about ASEAN, anything about disaster management in ASEAN, then we will use this agreement as a platform. Whatever the partnership, whatever the uh, arrangement, this is the Bible of ASEAN when it comes to disaster management. This is the... Uh, <clears throat> Another agreement is required to establish the AHA Center. Because we got the policy, big policy, the ATMER, but who will execute? You know, the people say the, the number one rule of getting this, uh, things done is to ask the first question, who is the full-timer that will do this? We got a policy, no full-timer, no execution. We just continue to talk. And people said, policy without execution is a hallucination. <laughs> we feel good about it. We achieve something. We meet again, discuss again. Ah, very good. How, what do you think? It was a good discussion. We meet again, we discuss the same thing. Nothing happened unless we execute. And to execute, we get a full timer that a person, an organization, being tasked only for specific result and being monitored to deliver that result. That's execution. Another two years to set up AHA Center, 
everyone will need to agree. And 17 November 2011 in Bali, Indonesia, the ASEAN foreign minister witnessed by head of state signed uh, another agreement for establishment of the AHA Center. So this is our birth certificate. When we were born in Bali, but has nothing to do with tourism, our headquarters also is not in Bali, but in Jakarta. This is how we work. Now, as a regional entity, the way we work, we cannot just step into any country as we wish. We can only get into a country in ASEAN, one, if the country requests for assistance, two, if the, if the country accepts the offer of assistance of from our center of member state. We have responded to 13 disasters in the past four years. Never we wait for requests for assistance. The default will always disaster happen. We have a template for condolence. We have a template for offer of assistance. We have informal mechanisms start making the call. We got a formal mechanism for SOP. And then we said, the moment you say yes, affected country, within eight hours, we will be on the ground. And the moment we go to the affected country, we only follow single point of contact and single point of command, which is the National Disaster Management Agency, or in, in the here, MACDEM. So we go to a country, we report to the Disaster Management Authority, we decide the plan, we discuss whatever we do must get the approval of the affected country. And we work to support the government of the affected country. So <clears throat> that's how we work. Now, why not waiting for requests for assistance? Requesting for international assistance is not only a technical issue. It's a political issue for the country. For some, it's a cultural issue as well. And then the last one would be technical capacity issue and so on. There will be a time that a country cannot afford or cannot do anything by themselves. And that would be a time where international assistance coming in. But my observation, receiving assistance is more difficult than giving assistance. For you who are involved in the receiving assistance, you will know this. If I want to give assistance, I see what, what is available in the warehouse, get the plane, fly, meet one authority, and deal. I just need to deal with one authority. But for those that receiving assistance, this one authority will get hundreds of agency coming to them. That's always the challenge. So if we want to fix this, we need to fix both. We even need to fix on how do we assist the country. It's a very thin line, what people say, when it comes to giving assistance, whether our assistance will become an asset or a liability for those that receive assistance. We have been, for example, I have my own experience when, when during that in the Indonesia, for example, people send medicine, it takes time for it to process, and suddenly it's uh, you know, expired. <coughs> now, medicine you cannot just throw in the river, right? You got a regulation how to dispose this one. What does it mean? It costs for the receiving end. You need to find a way, you need to burn it, whatever it is, it's cost. So it always, you know what people say in the Mediterranean, good intention alone sometimes is not enough. At the end, those the receiving end that will decide whether our assistance meaningful or not. These are our founding fathers. This is the uh, 10 National Disaster Management Agency of the ASEAN. So this is how we work. We connect with all of them. They serve as our governing board. They're also the Committee on Disaster Management in ASEAN. 
And then in the case of large-scale disaster, then the AHA Center will connect directly with the Secretary General of ASEAN. It's a separate agency. Secretary General of ASEAN will be at the ASEAN Secretariat. But the way we split it, Secretary General will talk about the politics of high-level leaders. AHA Center will focus on the execution. So this is example during uh, Haiyan. Uh, this is the Secretary General of ASEAN coming to the office of our center. We brief, we plan, and then we went to the ground. But our team already much, much more advanced, uh, already on the ground, and uh, have some visit. So it's more on the symbolic as well. Uh, and this is only happened, the Secretary General will only step in if there is a large-scale disaster and pandemic. Now, to operationalize the agreement, we also have this, SASOP, Standard Operating Procedures. This is being used by ASEAN, this is being used by the uh, AHA Center when there is a big, or when there, there is a case where we need to respond. What is inside? Everything. It, it regulates how to request for assistance, how to offer assistance, join assessment, mobilize resource, demobilize, and so on. So the system is there and being tested. People always, but as a, too difficult, there's so many things we need to open up. We make it simple. You call AHA Center, then we sort it out. So that's what happened. The affected country just need to communicate with AHA Center. AHA Center will communicate with the other nine countries. The assisting country talk to AHA Center, then we talk with the affected country. We said that the Malaysia would like to send this, this, this would be okay for you. We said, ah, this one, okay, okay, but the milk powder or babies thing is uh, maybe not at this stage. We also provide a, what we call a saving face device, you know, for the country instead of country to country, because we set up by them. And our job is to serve us, to provide service to the 10 ASEAN member states. As a new organization, currently the governing board decides that our center to focus on natural disaster only at the stage and focus on two things. Disaster monitoring, preparedness and response. This is the information product that we produce constantly in different situations, and this is the, uh, some of the response that we had. So what are the information product? <clears throat> One is what we call common operating pictures. This is a software system, can be accessed by all the 10 countries. This is to monitor what happened, the risk, the hazard, and everything. This is example, we captured this uh, typhoon Haiyan four, four days before the typhoon we know already. And the system able to detect that. So typhoon is quite predictable. But what shocked us at that time, you got like one, two, three, four. Typhoon at the same time. For us, we were two years old at that time. That would be very, very challenging. If we get big disaster at the same time in the different countries in ASEAN, Whoa. Even big one already, whoa. You know? You put three and four, it's gonna be like whoa, whoa, whoa. You know? <laughs> so this is was like, oh, wow. But then only this one. But we say only this is the biggest typhoon ever. This is big typhoon as well. So this is usually we do when we monitor situation. And all the ten countries can connect and log in as well. We, we use this the PDC system, uh, Pacific Disaster uh, System. <coughs> and we have this one. This one, as some of you may be familiar, this is a web EOC, a web based uh, emergency operation center, because we need to connect with all the 10 countries in the ASEAN. This one, real time information, when we activate this, when we have a field response. So now, all the 10 countries will have the same information right from the field, <coughs> giving to us. And we have like, this is like a meeting room. Some like everyone can get in, some only for certain people. If some information very raw that cannot go to public, a lot of speculation, but it's good for us for analysis and making decision. With this, what we want to achieve, a vision that information must be available before it is being asked, and information must be available a click away or a login away. <coughs> the moment member state asks 
AHA Center. Can we get an update on that earthquake? We failed already because it means we late. We are being asked already. So what we want to push information so the ASEAN member states don't even need to ask for information because it's already there. Then we produce this. This is flash update. Usually immediately after disaster, we said there is a big earthquake. We don't know yet what happened, but this is information that we got. We might need to respond. Every week we capture what happened in the region. Every month we have uh, this one. We have new product as well now, as we call it the, the forecast. What would happen the next uh, three months, weather related. We have uh, Twitter, we have Facebook, and we have uh, this one as well open for public, anyone. ASEAN is ASEAN for network. We got the column, the monthly update, all information. So we try to get information, different sources, giving it to different stakeholders. <clears throat> we do have as well the warehouse. This is in Subang, Malaysia, relief item. Uh, we can mobilize at any given time. We get family kit, mobile storage, boat, generator, some of the item. And, and uh, a lot of this with uh, different support, like this one support from the government of Japan. Uh, government of New Zealand has given a very important support, start from the beginning. Uh, beginning, it's mean at that time only me, myself at the office. <laughs> An office is empty. You don't even have coffee, tea, and so on. But that time we were, uh, uh, Seconded uh, uh, John Norton, which is the uh, former director of NECDEM, if I'm not mistaken, uh, and, uh, and until now as well, being uh, partners with New Zealand uh, in investing for the future leaders of ASEAN on disaster management through the ACE program with uh, UC, University of uh, Canberra. And we'll, we'll continue the partnership. So, so I would like to take this opportunity as well to thank the government of New Zealand for the great support for the R Center. Whatever you see here, whatever we have achieved, there is a contribution from the people and the government of New Zealand as well. Every two years, we have this ASEAN Disaster Emergency Response Simulation Exercise. Before, it was the ad hoc. Now we want to standardize. We have a handbook. So we get a step to follow, what to do to exercise, what to want to achieve, and so on. This, the last one is RDEC 13. 13 mean the year. So this was 2013, and the next one would be in this October, 2016. And people start to ask, but you said every two years. 2013 means that we have to conduct it in 2015. Ah, we said, in ASEAN, we have different way of calculation, you know? <laughs> Even if we conduct in 2016, it's still two years. We call it two years and 10 months. <laughs> if it goes next year, we call it two years and 24 months. <laughs> but consistent, we start with two years. <laughs> so this is we will have it. We will test different actors, military, private sector, NDMO. We will try to make it an inclusive. We want to test the SOP. So when we do the exercise, like you as well, there is something that we want to achieve. And usually we want to, uh, what we call, what we want to achieve an SOP, uh, whether it's still valid or not. Then we get this, the emergency response team. Uh, we call it ASEAN uh, IRAT, uh, Emergency Response and Assessment Team. Used to be, the name is ASEAN, Emer ASEAN uh, Emergency Rapid Assessment Team only on assessment, but we said, you know, in a lot of cases, we know already what is needed. If we just send assessment team, might be very little value. So we start with changing the name, which means uh, changing the function. So now, they conduct assessment, they uh, coordinate with our center for mobilization response, facilitate incoming relief assistance, which is logistic. They do the logistic as well. In order to become an ASEAN IRAT member, you got to pass uh, 100 hours training. It's a 10 days of training. And then now we got 118 members spread around. We got uh, uh, 
National Disaster Management Office. AHA centers mandatory every staff must pass training, including myself, uh, ASEAN Secretariat, Red Cross Military, CSO, and this area is something that we want to more, have more. More from Red Cross Military, CSO, as well as the private sectors. Now, <laughs> as of uh, 2015, we have responded to six, uh, 16 emergency response, uh, 75 ERAT members being deployed in the ASEAN region. And ERAT born even earlier than the AHA Center. So they are already born in the 2008, but now since the AHA Center is here in, in the uh, established, everything about emergency response will be managed by the AHA Center. This is some uh, example of the ERAT member from, uh, we got uh, this one from uh, Red Cross, uh, government, this is a CSO. Uh, this, this is uh, interesting in the uh, Myanmar flood. Australia at that time sending the uh, plane and uh, they have a relief item, a same depot in the Malaysia. So they asked, do you want uh, we carry your uh, relief item? We said, Yes, military plane, bigger space, can move fast. So we, we use that as well. We use a military plane of uh, uh, what we call uh, Malaysia as well, Philippines as well during our response, which is very, very useful. 13th uh, disaster so far. Uh, four years of establishment, this is our response. The first response was uh, Myanmar. Uh, this is not all the big earthquake. Most of them are medium. Uh, medium. So for us, we used to test our uh, system as well. AHA Center, only one year at that time. And then we have like, what, three, four people only? I remember my, my head of operation said, you know, asked me, sir, what should we do? I said, to be honest, I don't know. But I know we need to fly. We just go there. Have not, no clue how to respond to 10 countries, sovereignty, politics, and all of this. But one thing we sh we're sure, if we want to get things done, we must be close to where the action is. So we feel the heat. So we can make a decision based on the reality at that situation, particularly re emergency response. But now, automatic. Is we develop a system, SOP and everything, it's basically we start to we start getting bored. Everything is structured. Executive director being kicked out from decision-making process during emergency. They call it, you know, you focus on the high level. It means that, you know, stay away from us. <laughs> go, go, this is our time. Respond. So, now we responded to 13 disasters. In some, we, we have a preparedness mission. We flew the team uh, to the country, and then basically, you know, country say, it's OK, not that big, and we come back. But what is important when we see this picture, it's not about this boat, not about this release item, generators, family kit, or tents, when we deliver this. What we deliver is basically the solidarity of ASEAN. I mean, a small, big, I think it's also the same in any country. What is important for us is the people of ASEAN, the 600 million people, they know there's something called ASEAN. What is even more important is during disaster, people lost everything. How many times we have the story of, you know, I lost my wife, I lost my husband, I lost my kid, I lost my wife, uh, I lost my house. They lost all of this. But we, as a humanitarian worker, if we consider that, we should make sure that they will not lose their hope. So when we deliver this, is with that. We want to make sure, you, we know that you lost a lot of things, but you still have friends. We do whatever we could. 
Never, never lost hope because once you lost that, you lost everything. We lost, they lost their hope. They lost the purpose of life. So we also in that business. So when we deliver this, it's not only about this thing, but it goes beyond. You have discussed, we have, you have learned about a lot of uh, technical things. This is the thing that we also invest. We call it AHA Center Executive Program. Six month program, focus on limited quality people with the objective to prepare the future leaders of ASEAN. This is a program where we said, we want to prepare our own boss because they will sit in the governing board in the next 10 years. They will go up. This is where we have a lot of uh, support from the New Zealand government as well. Uh, we have uh, graduate already then. We got now 45 with this batch. So uh, we aim for 100 future leaders for this program, very intensive. And we start working with the private sectors. When we work with the private sectors, what we aim actually is how can we get the culture of change and innovation, which is practiced heavily by the private sectors, they can inject that to our humanitarian work or emergency work. We want to borrow their brain, their practice, their research and development, not only about the cash, the funding, their expertise. I just came back before coming here meeting with the seven uh, telecommunication company, the telecom that provide uh, phone line and everything. And we said, would that be possible you have, you created an emergency response team for telecommunication. So whenever a disaster, I call you and you got like team, then we set up the emergency telecom team. What else we can do with the private sectors? Because they bring change. We cannot get change and innovation if we just stay around with our own club. Yeah, all of us, everyone agree on everything. We need to bring the strangers into our club. Then we get a different thinking. Now, where ASEAN want to be in the future? We talk about the past, we talk about present. This is the future. This is a brand new. Uh, it was launched in the, was it last April? Philip was there in Semarang, Indonesia. The vision of ASEAN on becoming a global leader on disaster management by 2025. Ambitious? Absolutely. Bold, ambitious vision. Why do we need to have this type of vision? It really forced us to the limit that go beyond our comfort zone. And we tell everyone about this. But it doesn't mean that ASEAN want to be alone in the global readers. We want to inject this virus as well to you, that New Zealand becoming a global leader, Australia becoming global leader, America is everyone becoming into this objective. And then we have the achievement of all the country going up. We try to spread this to regional organization as well. But if people ask, what is our basis for making ASEAN dare to dream? on becoming a global leader for disaster management. These are the basis. We got this world-class disaster with lost a lot of life, property, and everything. But at the same time, it strengthened the knowledge and experience within the region, being practiced every day. This is some of the example, and every, Every disaster, for example, Typhoon Haiyan, we did the, about the lesson learned, we see what, what we can do, right? This is Cyclone Nargis, some disaster produce agreement and so on. But what we are not doing is having a, mind, a mindset that we can contribute this knowledge as well outside the region. What we didn't see, because we do it every day, we don't see the value of it. We don't structure the knowledge. We don't make it as a curriculum. We don't make it as a standard. We don't put it in writing, which is something that we plan to do. At the same time, <clears throat> 2015 is the year of all global initiative. 
Sustainable Development, Sustainable, Sustainable Development Goals, Sendai, Paris, World Humanitarian Summit, which is start this year, but last year is already starting as well. ASEAN also issue ASEAN 2025, forging ahead together. This is not only disaster management, the whole thing. So it's about the time that the long-term vision being established. So we say, hey, disaster management, what happened? Do we wait for a crisis and have a vision? Let's start. So based on different document, then we craft our own vision as well. This is the vision, becoming a global leader through, there are three points that we see we really need to uh, put an effort. Institu uh, co uh, institutionalization and communication, partnership innovation, finance and resource mobilization. Let me explain a bit. This is what we want to achieve in the next 10 years. Institution, expand the current scope and focus of AHA Center. People ask what is the biggest ch challenge running the AHA Center? Managing the expectation. If we went to a pandemic conference and they would say, why not AHA Center handle pandemic? We went to maritime pollution, AHA Center should handle this. Missing plane, people call me, do you search for the plane? I said, not yet. Uh, <clears throat> But then at one thing, we were thinking, hey, maybe that we should open for this one. Not tomorrow, but we should put a time frame that let's see what the limit. So there is a possibility the R Center in the next 10 years will handle the, the, the main mate disaster. Even one, I remember one of the person asked me, why not you talking about uh, evacuation of ASEAN people in conflict zone in Syria. So, whoa. I said, that was a brilliant aspiration. Can we talk again sometime? <laughs> and, but that is a possibility as well. People thought maybe in the next 10 years, our center become a, a crisis center, multi-crisis center or multi-crisis center of ASEAN. We don't know, but there is a belief that we need to expand. Our center need to grow. Again, in the past five years, we are very inward looking. Uh, we just talk about our disaster management. We just preach disaster management or disaster risk reduction, disaster response to those who are already converted. And we talk among ourselves which is good, we feel happy, you know, no debates. Everyone agree, oh yeah, let's go. But now we said we need to go out because change is not within our club. If we want to change the private sector, we need to meet the private sector more. If we want the disaster to be part of economic development, then we need to talk to them. If we want to say, you know, safe building, safe school, the health sector, education sector need to own this one. But we need to go out, not waiting them to come to us by keep on threatening. Hey, if you don't come, it's dangerous, you know. We need to go out. We need to be proactive. So that is the strategy. So three ASEAN pillars is political, economies, and social. So we want to go to this all over, telling about this is also your interest, but we need to have a proof. Because disaster management is it's like a total football, you know, everyone needs to get involved if we want to achieve massive results. We're talking about the communication, and this is, I have to admit, you know, just said that, uh, I think this is, I don't know whether for us only, but also for all, working on with the government and in emergency response. You know, we used to say that for us, that working in this field, we are very good in doing good, but we are not good at looking good. Just help, 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 do helping, fixing this. And people outside there asking, what are they doing? You know, they have not done, government has not done anything. Why they focus, but we, you know, government working days and night. So there's an issue of a communication, which is for us a disaster 
manager, emergency manager, she says, yes, out there. My job is to respond, save life. But same time, it's good as well for people to know what we do, passing information, so everyone have the same understanding on what the things that we are doing now and priority. So we plan to have a master plan of ASEAN communication on, on this issue, disaster management for response, for recovery, for whatever it is, to get a constant message across ASEAN. Global partnership will do more and more, uh, global partnership as well. Then this is what we talk about, partnership for innovation. This is where very important. It's about innovation for change. Uh, let me talk about this. Uh, <clears throat> you know, we've been talking about innovation. What we need to do in this disaster management or emergency response is what we call, what has been told as well, a disruptive innovation or disruptive change. Or some people call it quantum. Story of a smartphone. During my time when I used Nokia, it's about, you know, innovation is about linear. Changing the cafe, you put different, you open this way, you make it smaller. iPhone step in, it changed the way people communicate. Smartphones step in, hey, it's a new world. Few, uh, few months ago in the Indonesia, where our operation is, we have a big demonstration of taxi drivers. There is a Bluebird, there's a different brand. Usually they compete among themselves. Suddenly, Uber step in, Uber. And they say, what the hell is this? So instead of the, the way of the competition change, disruptive. Now, before they fight among themselves, they said, hey, guys, we need to consolidate. That is the real enemy out there. Apps, all of this. So we need to think about a big change. And a really sometimes a painful about change, pain about uh, change is a disruptive change can go as far as making ourselves irrelevant in doing what we do now. So that is something that we want to see as well. Then we talk about uh, human capital. This is about building professionalism in ASEAN through standardization and certification. I don't know about you, but me, people ask, how do you get into disaster management? To be honest, by accident. <laughs> I studied finance, insurance. I thought I would end up working in capital market, Wall Street, right? Suddenly, for my case, uh, Aceh tsunami happened. It was my hometown. Minister Kaffe called me and said, can you be my deputy? I want to build your hometown. I said, okay, just for a moment. Okay, I'll, I'll work a bit there. Four years, I said, this will end. I will go back to, you know. Then, Cyclone Nargis. I said, this will be the last time I work on disaster management. And this is, I'm not designed for this. Then, AHA Center. I said again, this will be the last time. In total, my last time is already more than 10 years. <laughs> a 10 years of accident. But at the same time, we're thinking, this cannot be like this. If we want to scale up our professionalism, it got to be certification and standardization. Like me, who said Said Faisal, expert in disaster management? Who said so? Either me, my friend. But we need to have, for example, a person like Let's say I want to consider this a profession, I need to be certified. I need to pass the exam. A certified humanitarian logistic professional, certified civil military coordinator, certified this, certified that, certified recovery specialist. That is something that we want in ASEAN to professionalize the field of disaster management. Is it difficult? Of course. Is it ambitious? Of course. But that's where the fun is. You get excited. Go more and more and more. We're talking about the next financial transformation. 
What we want is about achieve sustainable, predictable, flexible financing. We need to find a different type model of financing and so on. We need to be go beyond the current financing mechanism. This is something that we want to explore more, disaster risk financing and alternative financing. We call about ASEAN ERA transformation. I mentioned about ERA. We're planning to have three levels for emergency response team. Level one, level two, level three. Level one is 100 hours. Level two is 500 hours of deploy, uh, qualifying experience. Level three would be the club of team leaders, is to increase quality and quantity. And then also collective response. This work toward collective response in disaster emergency through one ASEAN, one response. This is about mobilizing the entire resource in ASEAN for response, regardless where it is coming from civil society, Red Cross, whatever it is, uh, military, uh, to achieve three things, speed, scale, solidarity. Speed is how fast we can move, scale is how big the resources that we can mobilize, inclusive solidarity is these resources not coming from usual suspect only, bringing more diverse uh, people to uh, support. This is the plan, ASEAN 1.0 for one ASEAN one response. Set up operational as our center. We have achieved this very much. This is about responding as one. Establish operational coordination with military, CSO. We are working on it. We have the first ASEAN Joint Disaster Response Plan, bringing all together. We'll take a bit of time. We are having a dream as well, ASEAN 3.0, facilitating beyond ASEAN member state. If, for example, one point New Zealand want to help other country, we see can we do something to help New Zealand to help other ASEAN countries? Uh, maybe through the East Asia Summit, for example. And we have X.0. It's about ASEAN responding outside the region. Nepal, for example, six ASEAN countries already responding, but not as ASEAN. We cannot put them as together. AHA Center, as a coordinator, only still working at the region. But next five years, that we aim to do that as well. The current uh, Japan earthquake, we, we also have, usually we do the video conference, uh, we, Governor of Japan was there as well, we said, you know, any country want to do something, help Japan, we are on standby if uh, Japan is assistant. So this is basically the one ASEAN one response. We, we should combine a lot of vision. Again, is it ambitious? Yes. But we believe in in three things when we talk about the future. One, we believe to dream and dream big. Two, we believe in our dream. And three, we believe that once we dream, we need to make it happen. Thank you so much for your attention.